Hi everyone, welcome to the Surrey Arts YouTube channel. Today I'm going to make uh, a video on how to make different beats in Soundtrap and using the Soundtrap digital audio workstation. And the two beats I'm going to focus on in this video are drum and bass and house. Uh, so the first thing first, I would set your project to, because we're going to do drum and bass first. So set your project to 170 beats per minute. It's roughly the pace of the genre give or take, could be faster, could be a little bit slower, but 170 is a good place to position your tempo. And then we need to open the um, beat sequencer, which is the pattern beat maker here. So you can just click on this button and it takes you through to a 16 step beat sequencer. Obviously it's one bar of semi quavers and each of the four beats, the four crotchet beats is separated into uh, four semi quavers. Now, for a drum and bass beat, you need to set the um, squares in the following way. You want a square in the first beat of the first um, of the bar, set your first square there, and then your second square needs to go in the third beat of the third semiquaver. And then your snares need to be on the offbeat, so on the two and the four. Now, in terms of hats, really, I mean, have the hats however you like. Uh, this would uh, this will sound like drum and bass already. We'll play it in a second. But let's say I'll put the hats on. I'll make them, just put them in randomly. We'll have a test and see what it sounds like in a sec. So I put them in there, there, and there. So as you can see, I've got one bar of my beat there. Now, I shut this down, and the cycle loop has come on here. So we want it to uh, play the loop round and round. And I only need to do one bar because what I can do is I can just wheel out this one bar and have it going across eight bars to start with to see what it's like. So if I zoom in, bring up this little wheel here and that enables me just to increase the length of my beat there. And as you can see, the cursor's right at the very beginning. So let's have a listen and see what this sounds like. Okay. So I'm not really sure about the hat, so I can double click on my um, on my uh, MIDI loop there and I might just change the hats a little bit, make them a bit more minimal. There we go, just have three hats in. Now notice when I change the hats on the first bar, it does me the favor of changing the hats on all the bars I've created. So that's a really handy and useful tool. Hit enter, take you to the start of the loop. I like that a lot more, it's much more minimal. Now, um, what I like to do is I like to have control of um, each aspect of the drum kit. So I'll actually put these on separate channels. I'll do that for when I'm making the house beat. So let's go ahead and make the house beat. So if I wanna delete this, I'm not happy with this one anymore. I'm gonna delete this. Okay, now there's another way to access the 16 step sequencer apart from this button here. I'll show you over here, you can add new track brings up this box, you want drums and machines, but the pattern beat maker is what I want. Okay, so for a house beat, I'm gonna set the tempo at 128 beats per minute and confirm that. And um, I'm just gonna start with one bar again. So the kick drum is basically a pulse uh, in a generic house beat. So I'll have a kick on the one, two, three, and four first semi quaver of each. And then the snare is on the offbeat again with house. So the snare's on the two and four. And then uh, if we're working in cliches or generic sounding house beats, the hats are generally on the third semi quaver of each beat. So that's what the pattern looks like there for a house beat. Shut that down and it's given me my one bar. Now I might just zoom out a little bit so I can see the full eight. And then again, just take the wheel and just wheel your beat out. Enter takes the cursor back to the start of your loop. And let's have a listen to what we got. That was pretty good for a house beat. So um, as I was saying earlier, I do like to have the drums on different channels. Um, what you can do is you can create a channel for each drum, obviously. Uh, or what I tend to do is I tend to duplicate the track depending on how many different parts I've got. And then I can just go in and delete the parts I don't want. And again, you only need to delete the parts for one bar. 
because then the uh, sequencer will take the pots out for all the other bars you've created, which is really handy. And again, this one, I'm going to take out the everything except for the snares. So my second channel's got the snare on. And then last but not least, my third channel is just going to have the hats. So I'll just take out everything apart from the hats. And now I should have the same, exactly the same thing, but spread over three channels. And I do, and that's nice. And now I have control over each one of the beats, each one of the parts of the beat. So if I want to have the hats louder, uh, sorry, the hi-hats louder, um, that might be something I want to do later on in the mix because DJs will often use the hi-hats to mix on. So I want to, might want to bring those out in the mix. And I've just got more general control over what's going on. So yeah, I hope that was uh, informative. Uh, I'll be making more videos coming up on how to make other beats in different genres. So yeah, house beat and a drum and bass beat. And uh, happy beat making.